What is up guys? In this video, I just want to walk you guys through a basic six-pack abs diet. I feel like the six-pack, the idea of having you know ripped abs, having a flat stomach, is something that almost everybody gets into fitness, bodybuilding with this goal. They envision themselves with low body fat. You know, everybody does. Everybody wants to be lean. Everybody wants to have the success of having that body that people are impressed by simply when they see it. And the truth is that you can build all the muscle that you want, but if you can't get lean enough in order to see the definition of the abs and the muscles to a comfortable extent, then it's not really going to be impressive. You're not going to be as happy with it. Other people aren't going to be impressed by it. So every fitness professional, every person that is interested in getting a better body has to understand these basic principles of how to get a six pack, how to get in shape. Now, what this isn't, this is not a ketogenic diet. This is not an intermittent fasting diet. This is not any kind of fad diet. This is the real, actual, science-based, slash bro science-based way to get six-pack abs that bodybuilders and fitness professionals have been using for 30, 40 years. This, you know, there's no secrets here, but I just wanna explain how it works so you really understand and the framework clicks in your mind. Until this really clicked in my head, I could not achieve the lean physique that I wanted. Once I understood this, it became a lot easier to get the lean physique and maintain it if that is the goal. Also, if you're looking to learn to put on muscle, you have to understand this framework as well because you have to come from a lean place before bulking up. So let me just run into this and explain this to you guys. The diet is four meals. A normal person would eat three meals, but somebody that's working out a lot with weights consistently, doing cardio and weights, should be eating four meals, have an extra meal, just to have a little bit more protein, a little bit more carbohydrates, space the meals out a little bit more so the meals can be a little bit smaller. What this will do, it'll cause you to trigger protein synthesis more times throughout the day, which will help you keep muscle and even grow muscle while you're leaning down. So first thing we wanna do is just establish the fact that we're gonna be eating four meals on this diet. The first meal should be oats or eggs or a combination of the two. Egg whites and oatmeal, you know, that's been the standard bodybuilding diet. But I don't really like egg whites because I find a lot of people have food insensitivities to egg whites. They can hurt people's stomach and stuff like that. So I just like either eggs or oatmeal. Some people prefer oatmeal with like fruits, chia seeds, protein powder, and some people prefer like a big omelet with you know peppers, onions, cheese even, stuff like that. So I usually have my clients if we're doing a diet pick between one of the two. If you like to have the eggs and the oatmeal, you just have to have a smaller amount of both of those things, right? So that will be the first meal. Now the quantities of the food, like the amounts, like how many eggs to eat, how much oatmeal to eat, stuff like that, that's gonna be person to person specific. So obviously every individual needs to have a calorie limit that is gonna be there deficit calories that's going to cause them to lose weight, lose body fat, lose fat off their stomach, which will reveal the six pack abs, right? So I'm just trying to tell you what you should eat. If you want to know how much to eat, that really depends on you as an individual and you need to be able to learn how to do that math, which we can talk about in other videos. The second meal is very simple, lean protein, complex carbohydrates, and vegetable. So lean protein could be anything. It could be a lean fish like a tilapia, it could be shrimp, it could be chicken, it could be turkey, it could be cod. There's a lot of different lean protein sources that you can do. It can be lean beef. Um, there's a million different things that you can eat and you can really mix it up. So if you want to be super creative, you know, one day you could do chicken and rice. The next day you could do like a tuna salad wrap. The next day you could do like a lean steak and potatoes. It really is up to you, but it just has to be a lean protein, a complex carb and some vegetables. I like frozen mixed vegetables. You just thaw them out on the pan and you eat them. That way you can get a lot of different vegetables in at once. It's more filling and it's more healthy. Uh, you could also just do a simple broccoli, a simple green beans, really whatever you want. You could even go with no vegetable. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It just, you want to get something green in just to keep the body moving and the fiber will help you stay full. So a complex carbohydrate, lean protein and vegetable. The third meal is gonna be the same thing. Now with the first two meals, you wanna be taking a fat burner. When I say fat burner, that goes from anything from, you know, just a coffee, just a black coffee, or a lightly creamed coffee, 
to like a caffeine pill and an ephedrine pill to if you want to get even more serious it could move into like some kind of clenbuterol or something like that some kind of fat burner with those first two meals the reason that you don't want to be taking the fat burner later in the day is obviously a lot of them are stimulant based and they will interfere with your sleep so you want to take it early and then at 2 p.m. the latest 2 3 p.m. the latest not you want to keep your fat burners at least eight hours before sleep, you want to take the last dose of some kind of fat burner, right? So the third meal after we've had our first two meals, we've had our fat burners, we want to get another lean protein meal with complex carbs and vegetables. This is preferably going to be post-workout. Where you work out here doesn't really matter, but this is the best place to work out. Personally, for me, I know some people can't afford to work out at 4 p.m. They have a job or whatever. You, then you can push the meal back to like 7 p.m. if you work out at like 5.36 really depends on your schedule. But anyway, lean protein, complex carbon veg, again, I like to eat the same thing for this meal and the same thing for this meal. That way it's just easier. I can make it in bulk. It's just a lot easier to organize. But if you're a real foodie and you like to have a different thing every day, as long as, you know, there's a million different options, as long as you mix it up, same thing. Now the last meal, we want to cut out carbohydrates because carbohydrates are needed to fuel the muscles during exercise and to replenish glycogen post-exercise. So we're fueling up all day. Even if we worked out before our first meal, we're refilling the muscles with the glycogen that it needs. But we don't need to be eating carbohydrates before bed because before bed, we don't need to fuel up our body anymore. We just want to give our body the things that it needs to build and maintain muscle while we sleep. So that's why it's better to have a fatty protein meal. And there's a lot of great protein that also has higher fat, preferably salmon or some kind of red meat, right? So like a grass fed ribeye or like a salmon steak or a salmon burger or something like that. Something that's high in the fatty acids that we actually need in order to keep our hormones functioning, our brain health working well, and just our body working efficiently, right? The fat will also break down the how quickly we digest the protein so it'll keep us full for longer at nighttime so we don't get hungry and then eat a bunch of sweets before bed. So carbohydrates during the day, fatty protein and vegetables at night. I know this isn't glamorous, this doesn't seem super fun, but I'm telling you guys, there's a way to do this diet that is very sustainable where you reward yourself for eating the same or similar things every day. You don't have to track your calories super closely or your macronutrients super closely when you do it a diet like this because everything is super clean and it will work and you will lose weight every single week. Once you set the diet, you just have to work with somebody to figure out the correct quantities of food, so how many ounces of meat you have to eat, how many eggs, how, much, how many cups of oatmeal and stuff like that. Once you set the diet, you don't have to count the calories anymore. You just watch the weight drop on the scale until you have a six pack. Then if you wanna get super ripped, you can manipulate the carbohydrates a little more and take them lower. So once you set a diet like this and you commit to following it, it's actually a super easy process that leaves you going from, you know, normal body fat levels to super ripped like seven, eight, 10% within 12 weeks easy. And that's why I like to do 90 day programs because you can lose a ton of fat in that time as long as you commit to a diet with a framework like this. No keto bullshit, no fads, no you know breaking your diet off because it wasn't consistent. Once you know what you're eating every day, you put the right inputs in, you're gonna get results. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. This is the basic six packs diet. Peace.